Hello, welcome to my presentation, Honest Tax Returns, Part 1 of 6, presented to the American people, December 2016. Know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I'd like you to meet four real people. Their names are Honest Rella, Honest Jane, Honest Abe, and Honest Tom. Meet Honest Rella. Honest Rella is a Californian and works at a regular 9-to-5 for Wally's Pharmacy in Bismarck, California. At the end of the tax year, she receives a W-2. Is Honest Rella subject to the federal income tax? Let's examine the facts. Did Honest Rella receive income? No, because income is legally defined as a gain from the conversion of labor and or capital. What she received is compensation for her time. What attribute of Honest Rella's work for Wally's Pharmacy was federal in nature? None. If none of her work can be characterized as federal, then what category of income was documented by the W-2? This chart shows a Venn diagram of the types of income that we will study and derive on the right hand side there is two types the documented um, presumed section 61 gross income and federal income on the left side there's the undocumented income which includes voluntary income the illegal uh, federal income and the federal income which is uh, below threshold now since honest rella received documented income that is non-federal it it follows that she received presumed Section 61 gross income. Presumed Section 61 gross income is the non-federal, non-voluntary income erroneously reported by a third party, in this case Wally's Pharmacy, using federal terms, and the liability of which is presumptively and falsely directed at Honest Rella. Honest Rella has a duty to correct. Honest Rella's tax return is made under penalty of perjury. Don't you think Honest Rella should correct the record to reflect the truth to the best of her knowledge? If Honest Rella was accused of a crime, what would you think of her if she remained silent in the face of accusation? Let me remind you that silence can only be equated with fraud where there is a legal or moral duty to speak or where an inquiry left unanswered would be intentionally misleading. This is the W-2 that Honest Rella received. You'll note that at the top right-hand corner is the Statement of Liability, and it reads, If you are required to file a tax return, a negligence penalty or other sanction may be imposed if this income is taxable and you fail to report it. In other words, all the numbers and information on this W-2 is not given as the truth, but it's only presumed to be the truth. Also, we'll note that there are terms such as employer, employee, and wages. We'll study in the remainder of this presentation and um, five others that the words employer and employee and wages are custom-defined terms, and they relate to custom um, definitions of federal income or federal employee or federal employer. They do not mean the things that you and I think of in, in, normal, in normal life. So also uh, there's a state income and state uh, wages that are, that are seen on this form. So what, what does Honest Rella do? Well, because she knows that the W-2 is erroneous, she finds herself a 4852, that's IRS form 4852, and fills it in. She puts her name down and her address. Note that she lives in Bismarck, California, with no zip code. And she also writes down in line 4 that it is for a corrected, or uh, to, um, for the correction of a W-2 form. She writes down the employer's name without the zip code, and in line 7, under wages, tips, and other compensation, instead of the $100,000 that the employer um, 
uh, alleges, she writes down zero. And uh, the rest of it, she fills in according to the deductions for federal and state and Medicare and Social Security taxes. In line number nine, we will study below. And in line number 10, it says explain your efforts to uh, obtain a W form. Now, since no statutory employer-employee transaction existed, uh, no W two new no W two form applies, and therefore she writes that on the following statement. Now let's look at how she answers number nine. In number nine, it asks, "How did you determine the amount in number seven? Um, she writes. I hereby deny and refute any allegation that a Section 3401 or 3121 employer-employee transaction occurred. No payment was received nor uh, made, which is within the meaning of those statutes and the term wages. The items at 7 E, F, H, and I are correct and were obtained from Form W-2. Now, it's it's good to note that if Honest Rella wishes to retain future Social Security and Medicare benefits, she may n omit the language for Section 3121, but also she would have to omit the amounts as well. Um, all tax returns are signed under penalty of perjury. And now that she knows the a return has been corrected, Honest Rella signs Honest Rella. Uh, 28 U.S.C. 1746-1 without the United States. We will study all these things in the course of this uh, presentation series. Now, Anisrella had no federal income to report. Thus, she is not subject to the tax on federal income. She did not evade the tax on federal income. Just as Anisrella had a couple of beers to celebrate, and to the extent that she had a couple of beers, she was subject to the tax on a couple of beers. A few months after filing an honest tax return, Honest Rella received a $33,000 check returning all of her federal withholdings for that year. A $9,000 check was also issued from the state of California based on her corrected California returns. She knows the truth, and the truth set her free. Now let's meet my good friend, Honest Jane. Honest Jane is a Pennsylvanian and works for Good Home Cooking in Bird in Hand, Pennsylvania. I mean, Bird in Basket, Pennsylvania. In addition to the end of year W-2, she was told to report monthly tips on IRS Form 4070. How should she report her tips? Honestly, of course. Let's do a study of her situation. First of all, did Honest Jane receive income? No, because income is, again, legally a gain from the conversion of labor and capital, and she only received the compensation for her time at work. What attribute of Honest Jane's work for good home cooking was federal in nature? None. Was any income documented under federal terms? Not yet, but she was told by management to report her tips using IRS Form 4070. If her tips were not federal and as yet not documented under federal terms, then what kind of income did Honest Jane receive? Again, we refer to the income Venn diagram, which we will prove and uh, derive over the course of the presentation, presentation series. And we note that she is in the undocumented category. And since her income is not illegal, actually her compensation is not illegal, it falls under the lawful and voluntary um, category. The, vo the voluntary income category is non-federal income volunteered as federal income for taxation. Because such income cannot be seen by the IRS, it requires the use of federal documentation to confine the subject matter to federal terms. It is lawful if volunteered knowingly and intentionally. It is unlawful if done without full disclosure, under duress, coercion, or through misinformation. Jane has a duty to be true. 
Honest Jane's tax returns are made under penalty of perjury. Don't you think Honest Jane should report her employment relations to reflect the truth? If Honest Jane was to report that a statutory employer-employee relationship existed when in fact it never did, wouldn't that be a falsification of her status? Could you trust Honest Jane again if she made a false statement about her relationship status? Honest Jane knew the law, and she looked it up at 6053, that's section 6053 of the IRS code, the reporting of tips. She notes that a tip is, um, is included as wages uh, from the, in the course of employment by an employee, um, of, by an empo- employment by an employee in employment with an employer, and they are considered wages under Section 3121 or 3401. Again, these employee, employer, and wages, they all have a prefix, which you don't see. It's federal employee, federal uh, employer, and federal wages, none of which apply to her. So what do you do, or what does uh, Honest Jane do? She fills out her form as directed by her employer or her, uh, you know, good home cook and management at Form 4070. She writes in her name, her address in Bird and Basket, Pennsylvania, without the zip code, and she writes in the dates. On the one, two, and three where she reports her tips, she writes zero, 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 and zero because none of her tips are federal wages as defined by the code. She indicates that at the bottom saying, I hereby declare that there has never been a section 3401 or section 3121 employer-employee relationship. Furthermore, no tips or wages were ever made nor received in the course of any statutory employment by an employer. Finally, she signs the form, Honest Jane, 26, 28 U.S.C., uh, Section 1746-1, without the United States and dates. Honest Jane had no federal income to report. Thus, she is not subject to the tax on federal income. She did not evade the tax on federal income. Honest Jane doesn't drink alcohol, therefore she's not subject to the tax on alcohol. She does not evade the tax on alcohol. She knows the truth, and the truth set her free. Meet Honest Abe. Honest Abe is a Virginian who by day protects our country as a Department of Homeland Security officer, and by night he moonlights as a highly skilled Unix programmer for Red Hat Software, Inc., based in the Republic of North Carolina. He receives a W-2 from uh, Department of Homeland Security and a 1099 from Red Hat Software, Inc. What kind or kinds of income does he receive? Did he receive? Again, looking at the income Venn diagram, we note that both of his incomes were documented. The first came from the Department of Homeland Security, and therefore it, it, it is indeed federal income. The second came from Red Hat Software, and it is not federal income. And the only one that's not federal income is presumed Section 61 gross income. Therefore, Honest Abe has both lawfully documented federal income and presumed Section 61 gross income. His compensation for federal employment is defined as wages under the Internal Revenue Code and subject to a lawful income tax. His 1099 non-employee compensation is non-federal income erroneously reported under federal terms and must be corrected or he is subject to voluntary compliance. Now, voluntary compliance means that there has been an establishment of a liability and failing to rebut the presumption of that liability, you volunteer yourself to comply under the terms of that liability. So, what is Honest Abe to do? He gets a blank 1099 form and fills it in um, as follows. First of all, it's corrected, so he puts a checkbox there. Then he fills in uh, the company and his, his own name and address, again noting that no zip code is used in either, in either case. Then under n- number 7, non-employee compensation, He understands that that means non-employee federal compensation, and because he's not working for the federal government while 
um, performing uh, any work for Red Hat, he writes zero, zero, uh, zero Federal Reserve notes. Further, for his corrected 1099 form, he writes the following. According to the best available information, the party identified as payer is a foreign corporation created under the laws of North Carolina without the United States and not a 26 uh, USC Section 6041A service recipient nor treated as a person under 6041A, which includes any government unit and any agency or instrumentality thereof. Furthermore, no payment was received by the party identified as recipient, which is within the meaning of the term net earnings from self-employment, defined at section 1402 as the gross income derived by an individual from any trade or business that is derived from the performance of the functions of a public office, defined at section 7701 and subject to an internal revenue tax under the excise laws of the United States. He signs it under penalty of perjury without the United States, 28 U.S.C. 1746-1, Honest Abe. Honest Abe received federal income, and to the extent that he had received federal income, he was subject to the tax on his federal income. Honest Abe sometimes drinks with his friends, and to the extent that he sometimes drinks, he is sometimes subject to the alcohol tax. He knows the truth, and the truth set him free. Finally, let's meet our friend Honest Tom. Honest Tom is a Massachusetts who owns a contracting company in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. All of his receipts are from private persons, from which he pays his workers and suppliers. Honest Tom is a trusted and respected member of his community. For many years, his workers have relied on him to be fair and supportive, even when the economy was slow and work was hard to find. And, because of Honest Tom's work ethic and trustworthiness, his customers always had more work for him to do. No one would ever suspect that Honest Tom was telling lies about them, not even Honest Tom himself. You see, Honest Tom has always been diligent in honoring his obligations, and until recently he was under the impression that he owned a domestic corporation engaged in a trade or business. Of course he cannot be faulted because that's what his accountant told him, that is what his attorney told him, that is what he read in the IRS instructions for the U.S. corporate income tax return, and that is what all the other tradesmen believed. But once Honest Tom actually read the Internal Revenue Code, where Congress decreed the law, he began to understand his errors. When an honest man discovers his mistakes, he will either cease making mistakes or cease being honest. So what do you think Honest Tom should do? Honest Tom thought about his children, his loving wife, his loyal workers, and about all the people who depended on him and looked up to him for his leadership. And finally, he searched his own conscience. And the Lord said to him, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Honest Tom double-checked the law, and as a person of ordinary intelligence, he soon concluded that his company was established under the laws of Massachusetts without the United States, making it a foreign corporation with respect to the District of Columbia. His company was not performing the functions of a public office, and therefore not a trade or business. He was not a service recipient, a person meant to be treated as a governmental unit, any agency or instrumentality thereof. None of his workers served as an officer, employee, or elected officials of his United States. Thus, his company could not be a statutory employer or pay statutorily defined wages. Moreover, none of his company um, 
related expenses and equipment could be lawfully deducted under Section 162 Trade or Business Expenses because Honest Tom did not perform the functions of a public office. There is a duty to obey the law. So, Honest Tom stopped accusing his workers of serving as officers, employees, or elected officials and stopped issuing them W-2s and 1099s. He became more frugal and brought bought only things that his company actually needed and not just to take a needed tax deduction. He stopped counting and sorting through piles of uh, receipts. He stopped worrying about paying self-employment taxes, complicated IRS rules, and whether or not his business expenses were indeed ordinary and necessary. Best of all, with all the money, time, and hassle saved from dealing with IRS paperwork, he was able to pay his employer his, his workers more, be more productive on the job, and gain a competitive edge over his peers, who were still mired in a sea of tax regulations and always fearing an IRS audit. And so, Honest Tom swings his hammer harder and builds his community stronger. For he who fears the Lord and obeys the law can, fear, can have no one else to fear. Honest Tom has a clear conscience, and he sleeps like a baby. He knows the truth, and the truth set his people free. The foregoing are examples of real-life situations of several persons whose identities have been anonymized. However, their actual tax filings and refund checks are available as proof that the information presented here is true and reliable. I refer you to LostHorizons.com Bulletin Board. Um, just to, as disclosure, LostHorizons.com and the book that they uh, have called Cracking the Code are among the many resources I used in researching the tax laws. My recommendation is not based on any personal relationship or financial interest with the author, his book, or the website. Again, his, book, his website is LostHorizons.com and his book is Cracking the Code. To understand the legal concepts underlying these honest, lawful and successful tax returns, please watch the rest of this six-part video series on Honest Tax Returns. Thank you. Please share, like, and comment. You have a duty to be honest, to obey the law, and to keep your brother from harm and injustice. Please share this with another American. End of part one.